Hi, I'm Amy and this is A Star Reads and it's time for another round of The Game of a Bookish Life, which I'm very excited about. I'm always excited about this particular video because it is so much fun to create. It's so much fun to see gameplay. Like it's, it's as much of a blast for me as it is probably for you. So I cannot wait to see what happens in February. I'm, I'm still a little shocked that January is over. So I hope your 2022 is going well. Mine is going well, but the, the TBR, you're going to see how well January went. Spoiler, it's, it didn't go so well. <laughs> so February last year, 2021, was a very good reading month for me. I actually got a ton of books read. Shortest month, ton of books read. And I think part of the reason for that is because it's my birthday month. So I get to decide that I want to just read books. Uh, it's going to be different this year, though, because I'm in school. So I'm probably not going to have the same kind of success for February as I did last year, but fingers crossed. Fingers crossed because I love to read. So if you've never seen my game before, I created a completely separate video where I talk about all the rules, all the new changes that I have made, and I will link that up here and down in the description box below. If you have any questions, that's a good place to get them answered. There is one thing that I left out though. I like to know in advance what I'm getting myself into, what my TBR is going to look like, if I'm going to be doing any read-a-thons, read-alongs, buddy reads. I like to have a very good idea of what is coming up in the near future. And so that means that I roll in advance. And there's another reason I roll in advance, and that's because sometimes I like to include video clips of very special prompts, like having someone pick a book for me. I like to get a video clip from them and give them plenty of time to create that and send it to me so I can include it or if I'm gonna go buy a new book or something like that. I like to include clips of things like that in my video for my TBR, and I, I need advance warning for that. So I tend to roll in advance, and okay, let's be honest, I sometimes just can't wait. <laughs> sometimes I just can't wait, and I wanna know. So uh, I'm a pre-roller. But because of that, once I roll, I don't know if I've finished my previous month's TBR. So punishments actually get offset by a month because I need until January 31st this month to finish the books that I'm going to be reading, so, or at least get into them. My punishments for January won't actually get applied until March. So once March comes around, I'm doing my rolls. I will know for sure that I did not finish certain books in January, and then I will include those punishments in that round. And that's going to happen every month, and that's just because I'm a planner. I plan in advance. I won't screw up. Well, maybe I will. I mean, everybody screws up, right? <laughs> But one of the things I am going to change a bit about this is that last year I said, oh, if I plan on reading it in the next month, even if I haven't started it, I'm not going to take a punishment because I'm still planning on reading it. I'm going to change that. If I don't get through 100 pages of them by the end of the month, I'm going to be taking a punishment. So this will all become more clear as I move through the process. So you won't be seeing any punishments in this round because I didn't have a TBR in December. But come March, if I didn't finish any of the books that I'll be talking about here in a second, I will be taking punishments. All right, so now let's do a recap for January. January spins. First, I had a YA Dark Academia book, and I chose A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. This I have not started, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get to this. So this is probably going to be a punishment. I, it, 100 pages in would be nice, but I have too many other books that are priorities for the month, and this one is, like, lowest one. So it's... Uh, the stay tuned. March is probably going to be a punishment month. <laughs> Spin number two was career card. I picked teacher and I decided to go with a book that I could learn from, something that would teach me something. And that was A Bitter Fog by Carol Van Strum. I am currently reading this one. I'm about 15 to 20 percent of the way through that one and I will have this one finished so it's going to be a win. Book number three was a career card superstar and I chose Song of Achilles because Achilles is a superstar. And this one, this is by Madeline Miller. This one I have not started. I don't think I'm gonna be starting this in time for the end of the month. However, this is a book I have to read. So I will probably be taking a punishment for this, but if I can get through 100 pages of this by the end of the month, then maybe I won't, but we'll see. I just, I have too much to read. <laughs> And the fourth spin was Career Card Salesperson, and for that one I chose the third book in the Crazy Rich Asian series, Rich People Problems by Kevin Kwan. This is another one where I have started it, but I've only made it like 30-something pages through. But this one's a little higher up on my list of books to read at the moment because I did start it, so I think I will be able to get through 100 pages of this. So I may not have to take a punishment in March for this one. 
fingers crossed. So that's it for my game TBR. If you want to know about any of the other books I read in January, check out my Sunday sum ups. I talk about every book that I have finished and give reviews there and then any updates on where I'm at with my books. That's a great place to find out all things about my channel. <laughs> okay, so at this point, I don't run too much of a risk of having to add an extra roll because of tallies, because I only have two tallies on three and two tallies on seven. So I'm really, really hoping that I can pass this career card <laughs> spot. <laughs> so one to five uh, means I'm stuck again, still there. Six to 10 means I can pass it. Let's see where we go. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, let's start with roll number one officially and see how far I'm going. Two. One, two. Oh, my first book card. I'm excited about that. Okay, book card. Let's see what we're going to get. We'll go with this one. And oldest on my TBR. Okay, I was excited about that. <laughs> now I'm not so sure. Spin number one was oldest book on my TBR. And this one was actually pretty good because, you know, I was a little worried about it. Once I looked at my Goodreads shelf, I realized that the oldest book on my TBR is actually a book on my physical TBR. So that worked out great because it's helping me get through my physical books. And that is Stiff, The Curious Lives of Human Cadavers by Mary Roach. This is a nonfiction book that I have had, well, since 2011. <laughs> And I have put this on quite a few TBRs, actually. So it's it's the month that this has to happen. And I have said that in previous months about this book, and it didn't happen. So let's hope it does. <laughs> I need to get to this book. This is, this is, it's been too long. It's been too long. And I am still interested in this. I have heard mixed things about Mary Roach. Some people really enjoy her writing, and some people don't. We'll see what I feel about this. This, of course, is a subject that I find very fascinating. And we're looking at human cadavers. So from one perspective, we're looking at how bodies decompose and what goes on after people die. But then also I think we're looking at the history of human cadavers and how that has helped science and some of the other areas of death that have shaped the world. And I'm not exactly sure, but at that sounds pretty much what this is going to be about. So I'm really excited about this. I have heard people say good things about this particular book. So I'm hoping that this is one of Mary Roach's better books and that I enjoy it. All right, spin number two. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. A sad book. Oh, that's a bummer. <laughs> a sad book. All right. All right, so spin number two is a sad book, which is, uh, it's kind of sad, but I tend to like sad books, so I'm not too concerned about this. This is a book that we recently got, well, me meaning mom, because this was her Christmas gift, but, you know, the books are in the house. I can read them, right? <laughs> And I chose They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. This is a YA LGBTQIA plus contemporary and I have heard so much about this and it sounds sad. It sounds really sad. Basically it's about these two young male characters that are in this world where you find out your death day either the night before or on the same day that you're going to die. And of course people have different ways they want to spend their last day but there is an app that has been created called Last Friend where you can find someone to spend your, your last day with. So both of these guys find out they're on their last day and they decide to use the app they become friends and this is their story on the last day of their life. And of course, it's gonna be sad because it says in the title, they both die at the end. So obviously there's no saving them. And so I'm really looking forward to this. I have heard a lot of good things from different booktubers about this and I'm hoping that I enjoy it. Spin number three. Six, of course. <laughs> I need to figure out the right way to spin these so I'm not landing on the exact same one. All right, one, two, three. We're stuck at books about love, romance, or prominent relationship. I like that. That'll be great for February because it's the month of love. Okay, so spin number three was great because, well, I hit a stop sign, so that's not great. But I got book with love, romance, or prominent relationship, which is fantastic because it's very broad and it allows me to fit in The City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. This is the first book in the Mortal Instruments 
series. And it's about this young girl, this is a YA fantasy, and it's about this young girl named Clary who is at this nightclub and she witnesses a murder. Before the authorities can get there or something, the body disappears or something like that. But she sees who commits the murder and it's this group of people that have all these tattoos and stuff on them. And she gets whisked into their world and she starts finding out about Shadow Hunters. And the reason I chose this for love, romance, prominent relationship is that a good portion of this book is about Clary's relationship with one of the Shadow Hunters named Jace. So I'm excited to read this one and it definitely has a prominent relationship. So looking forward to it. All right, now let's see if I'm gonna pass this stop sign or if I'll be stuck here. One through five means I'm stuck. Six through 10 means I can pass. I'm stuck, okay. I'm sure we're not surprised. <laughs> so that again is a book about love, romance, or a prominent relationship, and that will end out my spins. I didn't have to add anything extra. All right, so I like those stop signs and I don't wanna get off them. I just wanna stand still in life. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I ended up on Love, Romance, Prominent Relationship again, and that works out because I'm going to be reading Reflection, A Twisted Tale by Elizabeth Lim. This is a YA fantasy retelling of Mulan, and I'm pretty sure it's the Disney version of Mulan because this is a Disney version of Mulan. <laughs> nice. Very good, Amy. So the way that this version of Mulan is twisted is that Li Shang actually gets murdered by the bad guy. I can't remember his name right now. By the bad guy from Mulan. And he is brought down to the underworld. And so Mulan is going to go down there and she's going to rescue him because that's true love. So I'm looking forward to this. I haven't read any of these twisted tales yet. And I hear they get mixed reviews. This one actually got really good reviews. So if I chose one, I'm guessing this is a good one to choose. And we'll see how it goes. So luckily... I didn't get any extra rolls. And I know it's fun to see those extra rolls, but I need to catch up on my reading. So <laughs> I'm excited about this. I do have a few other reading plans for this month. So let me quickly go through those. First is Bookstar Read-Alongs. We are gonna be starting our very first series for the year, and that is Mortal Instruments. So I was able to get City of Bones on this TBR, which I'm very excited about. If you don't know anything about our read-along group, I'm going to link the announcement video up here and down in the description box below. Next, I had mentioned I wanna be participating in Buzzwordathon every month, and and this is a sort of loose read-along that is hosted by Kayla from Books and Lala. And this month the theme is pronouns or I think she said possessives. So for this one I'm going with They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera because we've got they in there. And I think this one works out perfectly. I'm excited for this one. And then we've got TBR Knockout which is hosted by Melanie from Completely Melanie. And if you don't know anything about that I will link it up here and down in the description box below. It's a really fun way to get through your physical TBR. So the first prompt for the month of February is to read a short story collection. And that actually is perfect because I never did get to read Stars Above by Marissa Meyer. So in February, I am finishing this. I am finishing this series and I am so excited about it. This is a book of the short stories that include a lot of backstories for most of our characters that we know and love in the Lunar Chronicles. And then the very last story is like a final story that kind of wraps everything up way after everything else happens. And the second prompt for February's TBR Knockout is a short book less than 250 pages. So of course, February, it's the month of love. So I decided to go with this little short book of poems that's called Into a Towering Passion, Poems on Love, Every Man's Poems. And this was edited by ADP Briggs. This is for a secret video. <laughs> and I don't know what to make of this, but it's Valentine's month and I could always use more love in my life. So I'm hoping that I will enjoy this little book of passion. <laughs> I have a few other books that I would like to get to this month, but we'll see how things go. And so keep an eye out on my Sunday sum ups to see what I end up reading. Also, I am continuing my children's literature course. So I'm gonna be reading lots of children's books and probably a lot of middle grade books this month. So I do have a lot of those on my TBR, like there, like see that? Those are all children's books. That's gonna happen here in February. And so if you're curious about my journey through children's picture books, I'm actually doing a weekly battle of the children's picture books on my, well, the first one is on my Sunday sum up, but the other ones are gonna be separate from my sum up. So I will link a playlist up here and down in the description box below. Okay, so now let's get into your prompt because it is time for the viewer prompt, which is something that we added last month and loved it. You guys did such a good job of picking books and joining in. I was so excited. Thank you so much for participating. It was wonderful to see what everybody planned on reading for this. You started on a seasonal read and let's see where you're gonna go. 
five. One, two, three, four, five. Biology element, and this is YA or younger. All right, so you're still in college and the prompt is biology element. So this is very exciting to me because I got my degree in biology and I love all things biology, science. I'm a nerd, I'm a nerd, what can I say? This has to be YA or younger since you're still in college. And I have two recommendations. The first one is The Accidental Apprentice by Amanda Foody. This is a middle grade fantasy. And it's the first in a series. I loved this book. I was very surprised by it. It, it, it crept up on me and it was fantastic. The big thing that makes this biology-ish is that the main character is apprenticing to be a mushroom farmer. So very super nerdy and I love it. I love mushrooms. I love eating them and I love looking at them. I'm a very big fan of mushrooms. So. <laughs> That is my first recommendation. The second one is actually Strange Dreamer by Lainey Taylor because this has moths all over the cover. Most of the versions I've seen all have moths on the cover, which have a lot to do with the dream magic in this. One of my favorite classes in college, and this will show you how nerdy I am, was my entomology class. We got to learn so much about insects. We got to create our own collection. It was incredible. In fact, actually, Funnily enough, my collection was actually sitting next to my desk because I have been trying to organize things. And this was my collection that I created. And we got to learn all about these different insects. And this was in Texas, so there was a lot of options and variety. It was such a fun class. Gosh, I love that class so much. So all of that is to say that Strange Dreamer is a YA fantasy. It's the first in a duology. I enjoyed it. It wasn't my favorite because I didn't love the romance, but I liked so many other elements of it. It's very atmospheric. And I picked it because it has moths on the cover. So if you have not read that book, it's a very popular series, go ahead and give it a chance. You're probably gonna like it because a lot of people do. But other than that, let me know in the comment section down below what YA middle grade younger book you plan on reading and what kind of biology element it has to it. I'm excited to hear. So that's it for me. If you would like to see Magda Spins, they will be coming up shortly. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe so you can see what happens in the month of February for my TBR. I'm hoping it goes better than January. <laughs> And thank you so much for watching. I will see you later. Bye. Okay, so Magda finished out the game at lowest rated on TBR. So that's where we'll be starting. She doesn't look like she's in any trouble. She's got a tally on three, two on four, one on seven, and one on nine. So she's looking pretty good. So let's see where Magda is going to go with her first spin. Ten. Oh, wow. You're going to get at the next stop sign. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is a TBR game, which means that you need to either get a prompt suggestion or a book suggestion from somebody else's TBR game. So somebody other than my channel. So let's see if Meg's gonna continue using TBR games to pick her books or if she gets to move forward. One through five and she stays, six through 10, she gets to move forward. Of course, she's so lucky. <laughs> All right, let's see where she's gonna go with spin number two. Nine, of course, because that's the way the spinner works. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops, it's off the board. Let me move it. Eight, nine. All right, spinner. Good, we've got a diversity rep. We've got the spinner, so we go off the color wheel. And this is dark green. Diversity rep, that's LGBTQIA plus representation. Spin number three, things are moving pretty smoothly at this point. Seven, okay. We've got one, two, three. Now when I'm stuck here, I'm gonna go one through five to go left, six through 10 to go right. She's gonna go to the left. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a book card, Magda, book card. we got family pick. So this means you'd pick someone from your family who maybe has recommended a book to you or someone in your family that wants to give you a book recommendation or even someone who is like family to you. Spin number four. Ten again. Okay. You're moving along. You're moving right along. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Another book card. <laughs> All right, Magda, let's keep this going. What are you gonna get? What are you gonna get? This 
one. Booktube friend pick. So I'm not sure how you want to interpret this, Magda. I know you do follow quite a few booktubers, so maybe if you want to go in one of their comment sections and ask them to recommend you a book, that might be kind of cool. Or if you just want to go with one of their favorite books or a book that they've read recently or recommended recently that you would like to read, that might be a good option. So uh, let us know in the comment section down below what booktuber you choose and how you get your uh, book choice from them. All right, spin number five. What might be your last spin? Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Goodreads winner. And this G means that this is going to be a specific genre. So we'll look at the different genres there are for Goodreads winners and we'll pick randomly one of those genres. Let's see how this goes. So the way I decided to do this was to go into Goodreads Awards and look at 2021 and see how many genres are there. Then I used a random number generator to pick one of those genres randomly, and we ended up with biography and history, which uh, it's interesting, Magda. I don't know how excited you will be about this one, but here are your choices. First, you've got Empire of Pain by Patrick Radden Keefe. Then you've got Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. Then there is The Five by Hallie Rubenhold. The Good Neighbor by Maxwell King. The Radium Girls, you I think you've already read. I'm pretty sure you've already read. Yeah, you've already read that one. Leonard by William Shatner. Dead Wake by Eric Larson. Did you already read that one or did you read the other one? The Romanov Sisters by Helen Rappaport. Jim Henson by Brian J. Jones. Elizabeth the Queen by Sally Bedell Smith. And finally, Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson. So those are your options. Hopefully one of those works out. Those are all your five spins for this month. You didn't get any extras. Who knows if next month will be as nice. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.